Welcome back to the Richard and Judy Book Club Download. And this time we have another contender for Husband of the Year. Another? Why, who's the other one? Oh, I just cannot believe you just said that. Hear what's made our spring collection this 2013 with Richard and Judy on the Book Club Podcast, exclusive to WH Smith. One of the best things about making this audio download for the book club is the opportunity to speak to some of the best in the literary world, and this week is no exception. Hi, I'm Gillian Flynn, author of Gone Girl. A thriller, a murder mystery, and a thoroughly great read is the next in our spring 2013 collection, exclusive to WH Smith. Yeah, this will be a case of where's the wife and did he do her in? But before we get to Gone Girl, get your copy with our special half-price offer. Stay tuned to find out how you can get our collection for half price, exclusive to W.H. Smith. So I'm just going to read the opening paragraph of the book because I think it sets up uh, everything pretty well without giving anything away. So this is from the point of view of Nick Dunn on his five-year wedding anniversary. When I think of my wife, I always think of her head, the shape of it to begin with. And it's a story of a, her, a marriage a which has I gone saw. horribly and, and toxically lovely. wrong. Nick Dunn wakes up on the morning of the fifth anniversary of his marriage to Amy. And his, straight away, his attitude towards her is frighteningly ambivalent. The book is written partly from Nick's point of view, partly from his wife's point of view, and you can see the difference in their attitudes towards each other. Later in the, on the same day, on, on their fifth wedding anniversary, Amy goes missing. She just disappears from their house completely. The police are called in. They begin to treat it not just as a, a runaway or a missing person, but as a potential murder. And Nick, the husband, is very much in their sights. Unfortunately, uh, Gillian Flynn couldn't get over here to talk to us, so we went over to talk to her. I developed the idea for Gone Girl because I knew I wanted to talk about marriage. And I knew after having written my first two books uh, about very lonely and isolated people who couldn't make connections, I was ready to write about the, the opposite of that and, and, the, and look at marriage and look what happens when you try to combine your life with someone else. And particularly in this case, uh, the, the dark side of marriage and the sort of strange toxins that we can inject into our relationships. Uh, partly knowingly and partly unknowingly, and what it does to to this particular couple uh, as their marriage starts to fall apart. I write because I love stories. I grew up in a house that really valued stories. My mom taught reading and my dad taught film, and they were both teachers, so they were always trying to get me to read books and to go to movies, and they really valued storytelling. They, they valued it as a way that we make sense of our world. And they got me thinking very critically very, at a very young age, you know, why does this story work? Why do you like this story? Why do you like this character? Why don't you? And so we always kind of talked about that in our family and, and really believed that, that fiction and, and the telling of stories could help us learn more about people and about ourselves. And so that's why I write. I have a pretty structured writing process. Uh, I tend to wake up, uh, treat it just like a job, make a big pot of coffee, go downstairs to my basement office and, and put in a sort of nine to five work day. And I usually take a break right in the middle of the day because otherwise I, I'm just kind of brain fried and not writing anything useful. So I'll take a, a break, uh, take a long walk usually and kind of Think about what I've been writing. Is it working? Is it not working? What, what am I writing in the afternoon? Where do I want to go with the day? And I never do a certain page numbers. I'm not someone who says you have to write 5,000 words a day or anything like that because to me that just panics me and I start just writing to write. So I usually think in, in what I'm trying to accomplish. Like I'm going to try to get this scene done today. I'm going to try to get this character figured out today. And, and, and those sort of goals, it makes it less, less overwhelming, I think, and a, a much more useful for oh, me. Oh, gosh, my favorite character in Gone Girl. You know, I, I love Go. <laughs> I think Go is kind of the voice of reason and sanity. Uh, and she's kind of the arbor, arbiter of uh, all things of, of good common sense. And so I like her. I think she's, she's actually a very important character to have in the book. I think Nick uh, 
has enough of a sort of whiff of sexism about him that he needs to have a woman who loves him and kind of vouches for him for the reader, like we all do, those friends of ours where we like, I swear he's a good guy. <laughs> um, and I think Go really, really does that for, for Nick, and it, it's an important role. And you know, I, I, Go's the, the person there I'd most like to have a beer with. I loved Gone Girl. It's a great addition to our collection. Um, it really is a story of um, a compelling, compelling and very dark mystery of a toxic marriage. Mm. And I like the way that, that, that it's written through the eyes of both of them. You know, so you, you get a kind of three-dimensional picture of the marriage, not a two-dimensional one of just, just one of them mm. re- recording how it's, how it's gone and what they think of each other. So you see all the differences between them. One of the interesting things about it is, I think, as a reader, because both Nick and his missing wife, Amy, um, are both horrible, to be honest. Yeah, they are. That's really, right. really unpleasant people. And so, as a reader, you're kind of... Because Nick writes some... Amy writes some, you're forever trying to work out which is the worst, yes. which of them is more dislikable than the other. And I actually always thought right from the start that Nick was more likable than Amy, even though everyone suspects him of doing, of her, doing in. her in. Yeah. 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 Did you guess it? No, not the very end. It's, it's a very, very dark and compelling uh, plot. Mm. Um, I didn't get the very end. I, in fact, I, I completely jumped to the wrong conclusion in the first that is, third that of the is book. That's not like you. No, I'm little Miss Marple. I am. <laughs> I always get my man. I always get the person who did it yeah. before the end, and I very nearly didn't with this one. Well, then that just goes to show how good Gone Girl is. When I f- completed the book, I felt very, exa- <laughs> very exhausted because uh, I was a new mother. And uh, so trying to, I would advise anyone not to give birth in the middle of the first draft. That is not helpful. Um, and uh, I, 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 felt, I felt really satisfied when I had gotten it. I was really proud of myself, actually, to tell the truth, because I had gotten to a certain point where I thought it was good enough, and, uh, but it wasn't quite exactly what I wanted. And I did a pretty extensive rewrite, and I made it you know, a much better book because of it. And it was... Uh, it's painful to get to that point where you think you're really close to being done but not quite done and to um, to, to go back and, and fiddle with it and, and have that sense where you, you're not sure if you're messing it up or making it better. Um, but I was, I was glad I went back that last time. I love seeing my work on the bookshelves of W.H. Smith. It's, it's a really wonderful sensation to see the book be its own entity out in the world. You know, it's for so long it's just this thing that's trapped on your laptop and no one you know very few people know about it and and it's you know in your head all the time and it 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 doesn't feel very real so to get to to see it out in the real world and and people picking it up and and reading it is a really wonderful thing for me enjoying the spring book club collection tell us about your great reads and join the debate on facebook slash richard and judy book club from the Richard and Judy book club, I have read The Night Circus. Very strangely, I started it as an audio book and it wasn't enough for me. I had to go and buy the book. The cover is so beautiful. It's black and white. The leaves of the page are black. It's beautiful. The Night Circus is a very evocative title. I was absolutely hooked. There are so many exciting characters. Um, I'm hoping that this author will come out with some new books. She's American, she's young, and I'm loving what she's written so far. From the Rich and Judy book club, I'm really looking forward to reading Patrick Gale's A Perfectly Good Man. Um, If it's anything like Notes from an Exhibition, which I've lost because I've lent it to so many people, I just loved it. Um, The atmosphere and the pictures and the background... Um, It's just a beautifully written novel, so I'm really looking forward to that. Um, I'm also hoping to get hold of The Thread by Victoria Hislop. I really, really enjoyed The Island. I think the the way she describes the the spooky yet bizarrely by the end of it comforting atmosphere of the leper colony um, and the characteristics and the way she interweaves the the lives of the different people involved in the story um, is just beautiful. So that will be a fantastic summer read, I think. I was chosen as a giver for World Book Nights uh, earlier on this year and I selected uh, Room, which was a book by Emma Donoghue and on the Richard and Judy book list. And I trailed around Colchester giving copies of the book away to people who were reluctant readers to see if we could engage them in reading. 
From the Richard and Judy Book Club, I'm looking forward to reading A Perfectly Good Man by Patrick Gale. I love his books. Um, I think, actually, I've read almost all of them. And the one I enjoyed most was Notes from an Exhibition. I work in the field of psychotherapy, and it was just perfectly written. Check out the Richard and Judy collection and get any of the titles for half price with our special code. Just quote 35 10 10 55. That's 35 10 10 55 at the tills. The code's also on your screen now. This offer entitles you to purchase one of the Richard and Judy Book Club titles for half the RRP. Subject to availability, cannot be used in conjunction with any other promotional voucher. No cash alternative. Well, it's one of our favourites on the list. Uh, it's many newspapers, Thriller of the Year, and it really, really stands up to being read. It's a wonderful book, and thank you very much indeed, uh, Gillian, for telling us about it. Remember, if you buy your copy from WH Smith directly from the store, uh, you will get lots of extra content in the back that you don't get if you buy the book elsewhere. Things like our interviews with the authors, a question and answer session, details on how to download our podcast where we talk to the authors personally, one-to-one, -one, uh, lots of stuff like that, but only if you get the book from WH Smith. Anyway, enjoy. What are you doing, Richard? Just uh, slipping on the lycra to get in the zoom for our next guest. <laughs> Ooh, is it Sir Chris Hoy? Sir Brad? Mm, not quite, but close. We're heading off to the Olympics again, Jude, with Gold by Chris Cleave. And after the spectacular action of 2012, I can't wait to relive that special feeling. Oh, Judy. More than just a book club. Richard and Judy, exclusive to WH Smith.